Hello, my name is Ralph Wynn. I am a product marketing manager here at SolidFire. And today I want to really walk you through the SolidFire scale out process. So before I jump into that, let me walk you through a quick scenario uh, that really shows the power of SolidFire and why people are really choosing us for scale out capabilities. All right, so we're over at the uh, whiteboard and I'm gonna walk you through the uh, scale out scenario that uh, really shows the value that SolidFire brings by this architecture choice over the traditional uh, dual controller architecture, which is a scale up type of uh, configuration. So if I come over here off to the SolidFire environment and really walk you through a scenario where you have a particular cluster here. It's a four node cluster, clients are connected to it, volumes are connected to it, everyone's pretty much happy. Well, let's say you're running out of low on capacity. Well, all you have to do to increase the capacity is uh, scale out by adding in a single one u node uh, with the capacity performance configuration that matches your requirements. You didn't have to go in and, and throw in a specific disk shelf or go out and, and make a huge heavy purchases to do this. So as time goes on, maybe you want to uh, increase the capacity and performance once again, but there's different uh, nodes out there. There are newer generation nodes in uh, the SolidFire portfolio. All you have to do is simply add that new node of a different generation to the existing cluster, and now that capacity performance is incorporated into that cluster. That's something very unique that you won't find with other vendors is that we allow you to mix and match nodes of different generations into existing clusters, so uh, we also rebalance across, so the uh, whatever volumes that were here now get rebalanced across all of the nodes. That way all of the utilization occurs across all, all, the entire cluster. What also happened here is volume stayed connected, clients were happy, and of course now you increase the capacity, performance, and throughput of this particular software cluster. So if I come over here to the dual controller architecture, and you're starting to run out low on capacity in this environment, well, you call up your vendor, he sends you some disk shelves or some bricks at a designated size, and now you have this big honking disk shelf that you have to throw in here to uh, increase the capacity. And that's all you did. You increased the capacity of your uh, array, but you did not increase the performance. And actually, now that performance is being shared across multiple, multiple disk shells instead of the original ones that you sized it for. So what happens here most of the times why people come talk to us is that the users, applications, uh, and, and, and the like start to run, uh, start running into performance issues, and the vendor up here will say either you can uh, add some more capacity, or you actually have to add another load, and then you have to move some workloads off so that you rebalance that particular architecture properly. Well, I don't know about you, but downtime is not a big thing that you want to introduce into a data center. So, as you can see, the huge benefit from a scale out architecture versus a scale up is that you can do everything now disruptively and also with SolidFire you can also increase performance and capacity based off the requirement that you have for your data center. Moving over to the SolidFire admin console, we can see exactly what's happening with the system. Unfortunately, my system has allocated a little bit more of the capacity than I would like and I have slightly over provisioned the cluster's available IOPS, so I need to scale this cluster as soon as possible. On the screen to the right is a Windows VM that has one of the thousand active connections to my cluster. Its eDrive is a volume on my cluster, which you can see by going to the Volumes tab, and then filtering for the scale volume. Here you can see the corresponding 20 gig volume. By clicking on the chart icon, I can get a detailed view of the volume being used by my virtual machine. What you get are all of the critical attributes of this volume, such as bandwidth, IOPS, and latency. On my virtual machine, I will start an infinite ping to my cluster storage IP address, which is the same IP address used to present the volume to my VM. This is to show that there is no disruption as the cluster scales. From the nodes tab is where I will start the process of adding a new node. This view gives you all of the key information on the active nodes in the cluster. To see any new nodes waiting to be added to the cluster, I'll go over to the pending nodes tab. Here you can see my new node waiting for me to add it to the cluster. The final step in the process of adding this 3010 model node to the cluster is to select it and then click add. From here I'm going to move over to the drives tab where I can see all of the active flash drives. Right now my 300 gig drives are not active so to change that I will go to the available drives tab. Here I will select them all and click add to mark them active. Now if I go back over to the Active Drives tab, 
and then I scroll down a bit, I will see the newly added 300 gig flash drives. Let's jump back to the reporting tab. As we watch, you will see the capacity and provision IAPS chart start to adjust as a new node and its drives are added to the cluster resource pool. With the addition of the new node, my provision capacity is now operating at 62%, which is down from the 83% it was previously. And my provision IAPS are now at 83% instead of being in an over-provisioned state. If I turn my attention back to my virtual machine running the continuous ping, other than a single TCP timeout, my active volume remained active, and actually the cluster maintained its guaranteed level performance to all of my workloads. As you can see with SolidFire scale-out architecture, it's a very light lift to scale a cluster when you need additional capacity or performance. So now, let's make the transition from scaling out to scaling in this cluster without disrupting the running workload. Now, you may be wondering why is it important to be able to scale in a storage system? Well, a great example would be, say you have a large 10-node cluster, and now you want to set up a DR site. Well, with SolidFire, all you would have to do is remove, say, four nodes from this cluster and then ship them to the designated DR site, and then set up replication between the two sites. The entire process could actually be done in a day. That's just one of the many advantages of using a scale-out storage system. So now that I have covered the why you would do this, let's walk through the actual node removal process and see how easy it is to accomplish. I'll start by navigating to the nodes tab and find my target, which in this case is the 3010 model node I added earlier. Next, I'll go to the drives tab and I'll filter for the node name here, which is PSN02-20. Doing this will only show the drives for this particular node. I'll select them all and choose Remove, and then confirm the removal. So that's all it takes. I'll jump back over to the Summary tab, where you'll be able to see the capacity and provision IOPS start to adjust as the cluster begins its rebalancing process, removing all of the active blocks from the node we just marked for removal. What I will do now is expand the Capacity bar to expose the details of what makes up capacity and I will expand the provisioned IOPS to expose the max, min, and burst reporting for the provisioned IOPS for the cluster. As I zoom in on the storage capacity, what you will notice is block storage and metadata storage used increase as more capacity is being used on the remaining nodes to create balance in the cluster. At this point, I'll wait for the rebalancing process to finish and physically remove the node. If you would like to find out more information on this topic or any other benefits SolidFire Storage provides to your data center, please visit www.solidfire.com.